the Christ I came to know through his grace? I'll die for him any second. Doesn't sound like he's scared. This is Bishop Mar Mari Emmanuel, who was recently attacked while his sermon was being live streamed. A few months ago, he was on the PBD podcast, and he didn't seem too worried about threats. I'll die for him any second. I do not give one penny with all love and respect, no matter what happens, because the Christ that came and revealed himself to this piece of wreck is the only one. He is my King, my Lord, my God, my Savior, my Redeemer forever. Towards the end of the interview, the bishop started comparing Jesus to the religious systems of the world. Christ is calling us to love him. He is not calling us to follow a set of rules, guidelines, and regulations. Lots of religions have rules, but he's about to zero in on one religion in particular. And let me say this to all the religions of the world. You're talking about you must fast and you must do this and you must do your penances and whatever you have to do. Recite the Shahada, pray the five daily prayers, give zakat, take the pilgrimage, and fast during Ramadan. Will doing these things ever be enough? Let me say this. To enter in the presence of God, who can do what God wants? Who can fulfill the fullness of the law of God? We are nowhere near that perfection to do and abide by what God does. Following your religion's rules isn't good enough because you won't follow them perfectly. Some people found that one out the hard way. He showed that in the Old Testament, the Israelite nations. Mm -hmm. They failed him from the word go till the very end. But he is the never failing God, his mercy that carries us. And this is a good way to lead into the gospel. So when those religions out there with all love and respect, they talk about laws, I'll ask them, are you fulfilling that law? Of course not. You're falling very short of that law. So don't tell me you have to do this where you are failing as a leader. So, people fall short of perfection. Who else fell short? Your prophet failed those laws. Your own prophet failed them. Who? Muhammad. Muhammad failed? That's not what I heard from the Dawah guys. And the, and the very reason why Muhammad failed, because he's dead. Their book says that. But their book also says about my Messiah, even though the Isa in the Quran is not the Christ of the Holy Bible, totally separate people. But let me tell you one thing. Your book says that Isa, son of Mary, went up to heaven alive and he will come back to judge the dead and the living. Interesting. Muhammad died, but Jesus went up to heaven alive and he's going to return to judge, even in Islam. Just ask the Dawah guys. We will, inshallah, wait for the true Messiah, which we believed, which is Jesus, peace be on him. He will truly come, not claim to be divine. He will come and rather kill the Dajjal. Thanks for the co-sign, Ali Dawa. But why is Jesus the one who returns to judge? If I ask a Muslim who judges, they will say God. Well, you're telling me this prophet will judge. So which is which? Has the prophet taken the role of God? Has God gone on vacation and he's come and take his position? No, but Isa is the living Messiah, even their book says. He's right. The Quran does say that Jesus is the Messiah. Surah 3, verse 45. And remember when the angels said, O Mary, lo, Allah giveth thee glad tidings of a word from him, whose name is the Messiah. Jesus, son of Mary, illustrious in the world and the hereafter, and one of those brought near unto Allah. How else is Jesus special, even in Islam? I speak Arabic, I read Arabic, I'm fluent in Arabic. When they say, But Isa, son of Mary, Jesus, son of Mary, is the word of God and the spirit of God. The bishop is right again. Allah says, Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, was, and the translators add in parentheses, no more than, an apostle of God and his word, which he bestowed on Mary, and a spirit proceeding from him. The verse goes on to attempt to deny the doctrine of the Trinity and the sonship of Christ, but that doesn't explain why Jesus is the word of Allah and a spirit proceeding from Allah. 
You see, according to the Quran, when Allah creates, He says be, and things pop into existence. But Allah's word comes from within Allah Himself, and the Spirit is something that Allah breathes out. So why would Jesus be Allah's word and a spirit proceeding from Allah? If you're claiming Isa is a prophet, then how come all the other prophets which you believe in, you believe in Moses, you believe in Isaac, you believe in all the prophets of the Old Testament. How come none of the Old Testament prophets were referred to as the word of God except Isa? Why? Why is Jesus so different even in Islam? How come all the prophets and every single human being on the face of this planet was born of an earthly father and an earthly mother, yet Jesus, son of Mary, was born in a virginal birth? Through a virginal birth, he has an earthly mother, but has no earthly father for his father who art in heaven. The standard Muslim response here is that Adam was created without a father or a mother. But that doesn't address the problem. Adam was created without a father or a mother because there were no other human beings. Allah had to create Adam miraculously. But by the time Jesus was born, there were plenty of human beings around. So why did Allah break the course of nature to once again make sure that Jesus is completely unique, even in Islam? Why? This raises question marks. How come this man is different? His birth is different. His life is different. Even his end is different. He went up alive and he will come back to judge. Here, the only answer you'll get is Allah knows best, which is another way of saying we've spent 14 centuries trying to figure out why Jesus is so radically different from everyone else, even in Islam. But our greatest theologians haven't been able to discover a reason. So we'll just say, Allah knows best. Jesus is different from everyone else, even from all other prophets in Islam, and Muslims have no clue why. But I bet Bishop Marmari Emmanuel can explain why Jesus is radically different from everyone else, even in Islam. Because he is different. That's the whole story. He is different, my dear friend, because he is the living God who was revealed in the flesh. He is the Logos, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and there is no one else. That is a better explanation than we've ever gotten from the Dawah guys. But please, tell us more about Jesus. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Yesterday he is, today he is, and forevermore he is. He is the never-changing God who was revealed in the flesh over 2,000 years ago. But is Islam right about the crucifixion? And he was crucified, not he was sent up to heaven. No, he was crucified. He died in the flesh on the cross, and he was buried, but rose from the dead on the third day, ascended to heaven, and he's been sitting there at the right hand of the Father over 2,000 years ago. So that's why Jesus is the one who's going to return to judge. And he will come back again to judge the dead and the living because he's not just a prophet, for he is God revealed in the flesh. This is the Jesus I talk about. That's why I fear no one. I fear nothing. Makes way more sense than the Islamic view. But I wonder if the good bishop has anything else for us. Jesus Christ, I not only believe in him, dear Patrick, I know him. You mean you know about him, like from reading or something? I say this with absolute humility. The Lord Jesus revealed himself to this piece of wreck. I don't speak about Jesus just because I believe I'm a Christian or I dress up in this cloth or I have read the Bible, which I have. No. Well, if you're not talking about Jesus because you're a Christian or because you've read the Bible, what are you saying? I believe in the Lord and I know the Lord. He is six foot one, long face, tan skin, greenish eyes, browny, crispy hair split in the middle all the way to the shoulders with a very short beard. Jesus is six foot one. You measured his height. When did this happen? He has showed me heaven and hell. And let me say this with love and humility. 
when you go to heaven, I can assure you, I can assure you, not because I'm a Christian, not because I'm a bishop, not because I believe in Jesus Christ, but I can assure you, in heaven, you, Muhammad will not greet you. No, assalamu alaikum from Muhammad then. Muhammad will not greet you. Buddha will not greet you. Krishna will not greet you because they will not. It, was, it will be only one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Who's that again? It will be Jesus Christ of Nazareth who died for you and me. I'm inviting you to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior because there is no other way. If we don't have him, we are doomed forever. For in him, eternal life lies. Whoa. The gospel is powerful. No wonder the bishop isn't scared. When I meet Jesus, I see everyone a piece of dust. What can a man do to me? Oh, they can kill me? Welcome death. Bishop Mar Mari Emmanuel said all of this and more on a podcast that got millions of views. Now do you understand why he's got a target on his back? 